Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Nick Cregan. I play Marcus Jet, aka the Joker on Batwoman, and I am a guest on the Man Cave Chronicles podcast with Elias. Nick, welcome to the cave. Thank you, Elias. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad to yeah. be here. I've been like I've been looking forward to this chat all day. You know, the listeners, the viewers can uh, see you as the Joker, pretty much on Batwoman. Man, that's an exciting time for you. Yeah, no, this has been a great, great year, start of the year for me. Um, you know, people are very much loving Marcus's uh, turn, so um, it's fun to watch, and obviously, it's also exciting for myself because I'm watching these episodes as they air. I haven't seen them before the fans oh, wow. do. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, before we dive into the show even more you know like one of the things i like to start off with my interview is like i want to know like how you got into the entertainment industry what made what made you fall in love with acting well i had loved film and tv as a kid i mean i grew up watching tons of movies and sketch comedy shows you know i grew up like watching mad tv and saturday night live with my mom and um i had loved like the comedic nature of people like jim carrey um robin williams jamie fox so all of those those uh, those actors right there, they were like huge influences me to like use my imagination as a kid. Um, but I just never saw it as a realistic goal to want to be an actual actor. I always had fun doing it for fun, uh, but never thinking of it as a serious career path. And then when I got into journalism, I was I was a sports journalist for a few years. Oh wow! And yeah, one of the projects that I did was called Two Point Lead at AOL Sports. And essentially what we would do is I would interview an athlete and then myself and comedy writers would create sketches for these athletes to act in. So we would offer them like a part in the sketch after the interview. And that's kind of what got my brain buzzing about acting again. I was like, damn, like this is a lot of fun. I do love interviewing people, but I would much rather be on screen. So I kind of just got my phone and started recording myself doing sketches that I would create and one of those sketches went viral and um, Oprah Winfrey's writing team on OWN saw one of my sketches and they had, had Carmen Cuba casting reach out to me to audition for one of their shows. And that's kind of just how I started wow. my acting. Yeah. So like no acting classes at all or anything. You just like kind of like jumped right into it. Initially. Yeah. Just jumped in. I mean, I've taken acting classes a ton um, over the past few years, but when I first started, it was pretty raw. I was just like, wow. I just got on set and I was like, Oh my God, like this is, this is the big leagues. I'm just here. I'm ready, but <laughs> I, I don't know how good I'll be. That's right. So like, but not only like, you know, before we talk into Batman, like you were on law and order, the spinoff organized crime of it, like for like 10 episodes, it's like, that's pretty yeah. good for like a you know person that just like got into it the way you got into it and you you went on that show and now you're on Batwoman. It's like that's a pretty awesome story. Yeah, no, it's been it's been I've been very truly blessed. Um, you know, being able to work alongside Dylan McDermott and um, you know, as my dad, and it's just it was just a really fun time. Um, Law and Order was great, and I learned a lot. You know, that's where I was able to cut my teeth because I was able to just be on consistent episodes with some legendary actors so i learned a lot from there and obviously batwoman now has just been a dream working with javicia as batwoman and like the rest of the cast has just been awesome everybody is totally totally professional and we have a lot of fun so um i've had a pretty unique acting journey to say the least yeah hey, hey can only keep going up right i love yeah that's what that's the way i think about it i mean it's like once you start working you just kind of find your your own you're not really nervous anymore about obviously you don't know when the next job is coming but once you start mm -hmm. to work a couple jobs you start to realize like oh this is possible like we this is i'm doing this thing so let's just keep going let's uh keep the excitement and the momentum going so yeah let's get into about when like how did this happen for you it was just like just a, an audition came through your way for this or yeah, yeah. I, I want to hear the story. <laughs> um, yeah, so right now I like to call what we're in right now the self-tape era. Like pretty much 99% yeah. of the auditions I've done over the past two years have been via self-tape. Yeah. So I got the audition for Marcus Jet uh, back in July of 2021. And it was a really fun audition. Uh, 
sent in the tape, didn't really think anything else of it. I was like, well, I had fun with this, but my manager and my agent, they were like, we really love this. We think that the producers are going to like it too. And within a few weeks, there was like, there was not even a callback. It was just pretty much audition tape. And they were like, yeah, they want to offer you the role. Wow. So I was really excited just to get the Marcus Jet uh, role. I had no clue that he was going to be transitioning into their version of the Joker. Mm -hmm. So what happened was after I booked the role, I'm moving from New York to Vancouver. I had never been to Vancouver before. And the day before I fly out, I get a phone call from Caroline. Hey, we should do is. So I, she's like, I, I'm, I know you're excited about being Mars, but do you have any idea like what his actual arc is? And I'm like, no, what's going on? And she's like, well, you're going to be our version of the Joker. Like wow. you're the first person of color to play the Joker. And I'm like, wait, what? I just lose it. And then I'm super excited. I'm nervous. I start thinking about all the legends who have played this role before. And then that's when I really was like, okay, this is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. I can't wait to attack this. Wow. So when you heard that, those news and you hung up the phone, were you like, all right, how am I going to play this character now? Because you want to be different than the other Jokers also. You want to have your take in this. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I made sure to, uh, after the nerves settled and I realized it was actually a real thing, this was going to happen. So I should pr prepare myself. Um, the first thing I did was actually watch The Dark Knight that same night. And, you know, I paid attention to how Heath Ledger did it. And I was like, okay, like, I don't see this being the Marcus Jet. Like, I think there are like little little pieces of his maniacal nature that I can pull from. But I was very excited that, you know, Marcus Jet was starting as a regular dude on the surface. Like you, you didn't really see any type of craziness. Like you might've seen little moments of like, huh, something's different with this guy, but there was no way a fan would be able to say from the first time seeing him, this obviously is going to be the new Joker. So that alone was was different than most other ones. Um, but there were certain scenarios in other Jokers, like in the Joaquin Phoenix version, he also starts as a seemingly regular guy. Like he's overlooked by most people in society. And you saw how somebody could be pushed to the edge to be that crazy. And with the Marcus Jett story, you could kind of see how the same thing would happen for him. In, the, in episode five, Professor Pig, when um, he kills Professor Pig and you find out that his, the child version of himself was kidnapped by the Joker and he was hit with the joy buzzer, then you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Like, of course he's gonna be insane. Of course he's gonna go crazy. So, you know, I think it, it's obviously its own version, but there are little pieces from, um, from other Jokers. That's awesome. How, how much did, like, did, uh, did you like pretty much uh, shoot ideas with the director and the writers and everything, like how you wanna play him also? Did you have any input? Yeah, no, it's really cool. Like we work on a very collaborative set and um, every director that I've worked with, they've pretty much given me free range to kind oh, of like do my thing. There will be, there'll be like little notes where they're like, hey, the executive producer just wants to make sure that this part of the story is told, but by all means, just like go for it, just do your thing. So I've been able to inject some like really fun choices in uh, the version of, of the Joker that I've created. And fans have a lot to look forward to because obviously right now, you know, Marcus Jett, uh, he got sedated and he's asleep right now. But um, without spoiling anything, I think they have a lot of um, action left to see before the end of the season. What do you think so far has been like the biggest challenge trying to play this character? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think the biggest challenge would be, you know, like early on, knowing that he's going to turn into the Joker, like making sure that you're weaving in multi layers mm. of, of, of personality. Like you don't want to make him too good. And then all of a sudden he's just like, it wouldn't be believable that somebody too good could go that insane. So I always had like a weird little uh, tug of war game with my personality of that character. So I think that was the most challenging to make sure I make him just multi-layered. Mm. So like while you're reading the scripts and you're like, if you're filming things, did you, how long before you found out that you were uh, the brother also of Batwoman or yeah, half brother? Yeah. When I did the, uh, when I did the audition tape, it was a scene that wasn't in the show, but you could kind of tell that there was some very close connection between the mm -hmm. two of them. 
and I knew about the connection and she didn't. So okay. when I got the first, when I got the first script, I immediately saw that um, there was going to be a reveal that Marcus is Ryan's brother in episode three. So I knew early on, um, but it was fun being able to play with Javicia because her character was totally in the dark about who Marcus really was. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, it was also fun to kind of have like a reveal with the rest of the characters on the show, because obviously as actors, we know what's going to happen because we read the scripts, but the character is totally in the dark. So I was able to like continually put little sprinkles of crazy <laughs> and like have, you know, mess with people on set and things of that nature. So, yeah. Speaking of Janicia, how would you describe now that chemistry between you two? Because you, now you guys are going to butt heads too. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's cool because, you know, off screen, her and I are like very good friends. You know, we're almost like siblings in real life, yeah. uh, along with the rest of the cast, you know, like Nicole, Cameras, Megan, all of us hang out and all of us are really cool with each other. So um, especially the Cameras dynamic, like him and I, we've gotten really close over the past few months mm -hmm. and to see them like at war with each other on screen is just really funny because we'll be making jokes and like laughing dying laughing off screen and they're like okay we're about to get on set and then i'm like telling him a joke while i have a gun to his head before we go and say roll so yeah it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun yeah. being able to play with everybody tell us about like the outfit now that you get to wear as the joker yeah um it what's cool is you know, they switch up his outfits a few times. He only wears one of the outfits that you'll see soon. He wears the same thing twice, which is kind of like his Joker suit. Yeah. Um, but everything else has just been like uh, cool fashion for me. Like I I've really enjoyed being able to play dress up and just um, dive into the style of Marcus Jet. And I would say uh, Jared Leto's Joker in terms of the way he dressed and all the gold and like all of his jewelry and things of that nature. I like to think that that is the piece of his Joker that I've pulled into this one. Um, and I've also been able to be collaborative with the wardrobe department. So a lot of what Marcus is wearing, I had some input on. Yeah. What about the purple hair? The purple hair is my favorite. I love yeah. that. Like, Cause I would never <laughs> dye my hair purple in regular, like everyday yeah. life. So being able to have purple hair and like have the different crazy hairstyles has been a lot of fun. Now, I know you can't give us spoilers or anything, but maybe you could give us a yes or no, or I'll rephrase the question, actually. Do you want to see the Joker with the makeup on? I would, I would love that. Yeah, that would be, that would yeah. be really awesome. Um, you know, uh, I, I dressed up as the Joker for Halloween before, and oh. I had, it was Jared Leto's version, and I had, like, the face paint, the tattoos on the body and everything like that. So it would be really cool to be able to see that on screen how long did you practice the laugh until you had it to the way you wanted it be honest it's my laugh that's my actual laugh so i've been <laughs> i guess i've been practicing it my whole life your whole life i feel like my laugh has always been the laugh that my friends and family they joke on me all the time they're like your laugh is ridiculous so i pretty much use nick's regular laugh and just put it on screen and i i wanted to see how directors would react and they're like wow that's a really good laugh like how long did it take and i'm like I guess yeah, as long as I've been alive. So, yeah. <laughs> when you, well, when you first uh, like stepped on the on the set, like how did the did they welcome you in like as a family? Pretty much like you like you you've already been here pretty much. Like you hear other actors, they step on the set, like it feels like I've already been working here. I can't say it enough how lucky I am to be working on a set that it 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 just feels fully inclusive. There wasn't mm -hmm. one time. And I'm not just saying this, like there wasn't one time I walked on that set and I didn't feel like I was at home around people that I've known for a while. And I haven't felt like that on every single set I've been on. So it's just a blessing to have this one, you know, be my biggest job to date, um, be one of the most comfortable feelings I've ever had. How does it feel now? Like your name will be cemented pretty much in the DC universe as oh, the joker you know you're going to be on that list so if people are looking up for google searching that list you're going to be part of that list forever yeah it's uh it's kind of a surreal feeling to be honest it 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 took me a couple months or more just to settle in the fact that okay yes i'm playing a version of the joker this is real this is really happening i can own this now yeah. um so to know that if i have kids 
if I have kids one day or if they have kids, if I have grandkids, they'll be able to look back in history and be like, oh, yeah, my dad or my grandpa played the Joker back in the day. So, yeah. I mean, it's just invaluable. It's really awesome. How long did you have to, like, keep that a secret before, like, your friends and family, like, they um, knew that this was going to happen for you? It's weird because when I did the audition, my friend who helped me with the audition they were like, something is crazy about this guy. It's giving me Joker vibes. And I didn't think twice about it. Wow. I was just like, no, nah, there's no way. That doesn't even make any sense. Mm -hmm. And then when I got it, I was like, wow, wait until they find out. <laughs> uh, so my friends who were like comic book nerds, I had to hide it from them for the long I was just that they would have <laughs> leaked it or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I was able to tell my family, uh, I think after I filmed a few episodes with my purple hair they kind of were like okay what's happening like what's going on um so i was able to let them know that's awesome so like now what's uh what's next for you now like any other projects or are you just doing this for now and they're taking a break well, um, I'm, I'm doing this for now i'm enjoying my break um there are some other projects on the horizon that we're like finalizing for the off for our uh, hiatus time mm -hmm. um i have another episode of law and order coming up um that i'm about to get ready to film this week so our next week rather so yeah law and order um still in the works and there are a few other little projects that i'm uh you know, keeping my hands on. Awesome. Nick, how can the listeners and the viewers find you on uh, social media? Everybody could follow me at Nick Cregan on all social media. All right, Nick, this was great. Uh, thank you for coming on and let's keep on the Joker going, huh? Elias, I appreciate you, man. I'm going to get you a Yankee hat though. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs>